A very good evening and welcome to this special surgery, which is a little bit of a surprise episode. Uh, this is Dr. Vinod Buller, my orthodontist, who uh, was not expecting this in any way, but when I wandered in to get my braces tightened for possibly one of the final times, I was absolutely delighted to see this, which is the COVID secure journey in terms of orthodontic care. And I thought it was too much of a good opportunity not to put this video out there purely because with the UK opening up for come the 15th of June, uh, lots of people are gonna be potentially venturing out of the house for the first time in a long time. Um, some of you may need to go to the dentist, some of you may need to go to the orthodontist. So we felt uh, there's a doctor and a dentist here. Uh, we're gonna talk through what a COVID secure journey is. Well, Vinay is gonna talk through what a COVID secure journey is. And then if there's any questions at the end, uh, we'll go through it. Uh, I will be looking at this phone going throughout. It's not because I'm bored, far from it. It's just because I haven't got my glasses on and I can't see the questions over there because we're two metres apart to do this video. Um, so I'll hand over to Vinay. Hey, thank you for me. Hi. Thank you for that. Uh, uh, he's just thrown it in, in the deep end. Hopefully I'm well prepared for this. So, uh, But uh, uh, we've had good compliments. We made this journey quite simple for our patients. It's very reassuring that since we've been open on Monday as to how the patients are reacting, they don't see our practice journey as uh, difficult because we've reassured them beforehand and so on and so forth. So, yeah, thanks I mean, for giving me this opportunity. Pleasure, pleasure. And I mean, it's interesting that you say that in terms of your patients don't seem uh, concerned and in fact they're reassured from the point of view of the... Um, the communication that you've put out to them in the, in the first place. Yeah. So tell me a little bit about that, because I guess that's the first part of the journey. Well, um, the way we looked at this was to first to mitigate the risk, really. Um, so we went through each part of the journey of a patient, uh, right from their coming through the door, to attending the reception, to check-in, to um, going into the surgery and see how we can minimize or protect our staff and protect the patients. So, and also, more importantly, adhere to the regulations. So, we went through that aspect and brought about this video. So, when we looked at the whole aspect of um, policies and stuff, we said we want to do something different wherein it reassures the patient. So, um, we had the screen and we thought, okay, let's do a video shot of their journey. So, you can see in the background, things are running. Um, so that it makes the journey easy and simple for our patients. So first and foremost, to minimize the risk as soon as, before even they're coming, they get a text message and almost a personalized call from my um, receptionist stroke manager who goes through the uh, history. So if you want to QR code that and scan it and you'll see the questionnaire that comes through, it's quite intense and they're all fully prepared even before they visit the practice and reassured. So, this has simplified the fear from the patient's perspective. Would you say that there's been a lot of uh, fear from patients, do you think? Uh, yes, before we... What, what, what kind of questions were yeah. you getting from people before you, you went out with this yeah. in, info? In, in the last two months, you know, patients were booked, but we had to always cancel them in the last minute. And they said, look, we don't even come and see you uh, at this point of time because one, we can't get out. This is what the regulations are say is saying. So. Uh, that raised concern as to one, I had to be more prepared, two, how am I going to reassure them to come back to the practice? Yeah. And uh, this video journey has really uh, helped us achieve that mm. and also thoroughly informed the patient uh, on the website, when they go to it, how to do it. So uh, if you want to guys try it while you're on there, you could just, um, when this video starts, there's a QR code, I hope, you can look at it or I can pass it on to Kishan yeah, yeah, yeah. so that on. you can have a look and see how they're screened in the beginning yeah. and to minimize the sneeze, the cough, the infection rate yeah. and so we're mitigating all that at the entrance as, as much okay. as possible. That, that, that's really important and I think you know as far as I'm concerned this is a, an example of our best practice and I think <laughs> there will be some dental surgeries out there and some orthodontists out there that haven't put this degree of effort into it yet because you know, the country isn't even opening up yet properly. Come the 15th of June, more places will be opening up. And I think the point that this is really important to get out to people is, don't just look at this from the point of view in terms of going into a dentist or an orthodontist or the optician. Look at these as vital skills and life hacks to go to the shops, to any, 
any trip that you leave the house for, it's not specific to going to the dentist um, that a cough or a sneeze is a risk to you. So, so I think that's really important and we'll definitely put the QR code and feel free, um, anybody who watches this video, to look at that and think. Um, and, and also reach out to Vinay. I mean, he's one of the first people that I've seen in the country to do this. And I'm sure you'd be happy to share best practice in terms of your lessons learned from this. A absolutely, yeah. Um, uh, the lessons learned was um, reassuring and how we're going to put across this message to our patients. So uh, we try to be modern, touch uh, as much as possible within their uh, personal um, uh, digital um, uh, devices mm -hmm. rather than having to use the practice devices. So, um, so we thought through how minimal contact they can have with our staff and the surfaces. So it's again right from the journey we had to plan the how because they had to use the toilet facilities to a lesser degree we had to even put in a word as to how they can manage that so that they're a bit more prepared to come to the practice and use those facilities to a lesser degree and also um, because they'll be touching the door handles and uh, screens and so on and so forth we had to map every aspect to see that when they're touching a digital screen for example we had to put a hand sanitizer next to it and say that is step one and step two is to touch the screen so uh, to minimize the risk of transmission one two if they're touching the door handles we have coated with the vsc thousand um, uh, anti-virus uh, or virusidal paint which almost kills the virus 99.99 percent at its source so we don't need to keep on thinking hey how often we need to wipe those handles door handles uh, right from the entrance to the toilet to the practice uh, or into the inside the surgery so we thought through every step of the journey to see that one it is seamless two from their patient's perspective, they wouldn't see this any differently um, as their usual journey. So to make a very um, uh, comfortable journey for them. Fantastic. I've seen Jack, my mate's watching. Jack's had braces. Uh, if you've got any questions, Jack, from reminiscing to when you had braces, that'd be great. I can't see any questions on this. So I think what we'll do is we'll wrap up because we've been going for about five minutes, which I think is a good uh, period of time to be able to share this widely and people can watch it. But I think the, the vital thing for me is hearing that you've put that coating on, on surfaces and handles and doors and things is absolutely vital and it almost makes what I did a little bit redundant in terms of when I had to touch the door, I touch a part of the door that I don't think anyone else is going to touch, right? So I, I think there's elements of um, best practice that we can apply to every single walk of life, whatever we do. Um, but when you are moving into healthcare environments, whether it be the dentist, orthodontist, optician, GP, whatever, we, we've both got the patient's responsibility as well as the healthcare provider's responsibility. And, you know, this morning in Lidl, I saw somebody opening up air fresheners, sniffing them, breathing on them and putting them back. And I mean, that, that is kind of behaviour that is just absolutely unacceptable in a normal world, let alone when we're dealing with a threat like COVID-19. Um, so, I mean, that's everything from me. Have you got any other final little thoughts uh, or comments? Well, for... uh, we haven't covered every aspect. We come here right up to the waiting room, but when they go to the surgery... Oh, sorry, I forgot. Yeah, tell me about that, the yeah. difference between yeah. aerosol. So, what is an aerosol? Yeah. So, when they go inside the surgery, we categorise our uh, procedures in such a way that they fall into two categories, or probably even three categories. Uh, but in terms of PPE, it's only two categories that we've got to be mindful of. Um, one is a non-AGP, in other words, non-aerosol producing procedures. In orthodontics, that, is, that covers almost 90% of the patient journey in the current time. But if you're putting braces or taking braces off, that's a bit more intense and that falls into aerosol producing procedures. But what is an aerosol? Because a lot of people that are watching will have no idea what an aerosol is. They're going to hear it a lot over the coming days and weeks. And this is another vital piece of knowledge that's going to help you uh, moving forward, living a normal as possible life. Yeah, um, aerosol is those dental procedures, like when you go to a dentist, when you have a cavity done or a crown prep or an inlay prep, um, anything that which produces lots of um, uh, mist in the air is called aerosol. So those procedures which produce a minimal or none at all are put into the category of non-aerosol producing procedures. Those which produce this mist where you have to use a high-speed handpiece or a, a high-pressure three-in-one tip 
or a scalar, when you visit the dentist, you would notice that falls into uh, the aerosol producing procedures. So in effect, what happens is um, in dental surgeries, 90% of the procedures fall into aerosol producing procedures. In orthodontics, I would say 80 to 90% of the procedures fall into non aerosol producing procedures, which meant it is a little bit more comforting to the patients that one, they don't need to be so prepared. Two, the risk factor is less. Three, uh, and the staff would have to wear a, a, a you know, PP level two on that aspect rather than PP level three. So yeah, the, the journeys will be different for each patient, but uh, because we have at this minute focusing on patients who are already started treatment with orthodontics, most of their procedures fall into non aerosol producing procedures. Brilliant. So I mean, that's really reassuring to hear in the sense that I didn't even know that 90% of your work was non aerosol generating. Um, obviously that's slightly different if people are going to the dentist, but then it's a case of empowering people with knowledge such that if you do turn up to um, any healthcare environment, it's very similar to, in my mind to the, um, firstly the Hello My Name Is campaign, where a few years ago doctors generally didn't really want to introduce themselves to patients and just cracked on and did stuff, which is completely unacceptable, thankfully that's changed. But then we have the hand washing thing where Finally, we're empowering patients to speak up and say to a doctor, well, actually, have you washed your hands yet? You haven't. And it's amazing how as soon as that happens, practice changes in a much better way um, and healthcare professionals just get to the routine of having to wash their hands. And I, I guess now it's a case of people can be reassured, depending on the level of PPE that your healthcare provider wears, is it an aerosol generating <coughs> procedure or is it not? Um, orthodontics 90% isn't but if you went to see the dentist then you might have to uh, consider whether the, the dentist has more PPP uh, sorry PPE on for, for that so I mean thank you very much for your time thank you Christian. Um, and when I get these off um, I need to be better with my elastics that's why they didn't come off today um, but when we take these off we're going to do some content as well because I think it's really important that we can talk through because that is an aerosol generating procedure when you take these off, right? So yes. we're going to see the difference in terms of the PPE that you have. Yes. Um, yeah, the, the difference in PPE there would be one, the staff need to be fit tested for FFP3 face mask or FFP2 face mask, and plus um, have high suction uh, or high volume suction uh, so that it uh, pulls in all the uh, aerosols at its, um, uh, percent, uh, at its onset from the mouth. So again, that's something that we would be uh, the next step that we have to take the journey through. Uh, we've placed orders again in this COVID situation. They are taking some time, but it will be with us probably ahead of the month, and we should get get back to no, near normality once we get all those uh, sorted. Brilliant. That's amazing. Well, I would shake your hand, but I'm not going to obviously because of this. We'll just do the friendly yeah. greeting that you'll have seen going in this video. Um, I've touched my nose, I can't do that. Well, you exactly, you touch your nose and that's the thing, yeah. That's the thing, so you touch your nose, um, so I'm not going to touch his hand, but um, that's great. And what we're going to do is, I, like I said, we'll do a series of these. So I'm going to go back to spec savers, what COVID secure eye care looks like. Um, when we take the braces, I say we take the braces off. When Vinay takes the braces off, um, we'll have a look and see what that says. Um, and if, I tell you what, if you put any questions uh, in the comments on this afterwards, I'll make sure that you get to Vinay and we can see if we can get you some answers for them. So thank you so much for watching. I'm going to creep over here and I'll see you guys soon. Cheers. Cheers. Bye.